You're live. Okay, live. Three. No, you're live. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Home for Today. Home made Home for Today. Jesus loves us anyway, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, good day. Okay. Men, I'm going to remind you, you have games night this Saturday night, 7 o'clock here at the fellowship. Be here. Bring your manliness. <laughs> <laughs> you guys do that? It's generally what we do. And women. <laughs> women, we are going to have a breakfast Saturday, April 9th at 9 o'clock at River Edge a restaurant. And you need to bring your friends because that's what girls do. We gab and talk and, and chit chat and love each other. And we're going to have prizes because that's how we do things too. Um, prizes, food, and chatting. And men do like. We're big and eating and <laughs> um, so ladies, sign up. Uh, sign up sheet is at the back corner there. Just write your name and phone number just so we have you down, so we have a seat for you. Um, there's no youth this Friday night. And I think that's it. Midweek activities are happening still. Wednesday night Bible study, seven o'clock. Everything else is normal. Okay? No visitors tonight, right? That means you guys need to get some friends. <laughs> All right, you can stand. We're gonna pray. Thank you, God, so much for loving us, even in our weakness and our failures. We thank you that you give us grace upon grace, and you remove our sins as far as the east is from the west. We thank you, God, that you love us. Thank you for using us. Thank you for giving us life and hope and freedom in you. We pray that tonight as we worship you, that you would be blessed, that you would be honored, that we would, um, we would worship you in spirit and in truth, that our hearts and your heart would be entwined, that we would be one tonight. God, we pray that you would um, change us in your presence mm -hmm. and be pleased with our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'd like to read from John 14, uh, starting at verse 1 to verse 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you always may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him, and have seen him. Looking forward to singing. Jesus tonight with you.
the one who heals. He's the one who answers our questions. He's the one who forgives. Even when it feels like we can't dare ask him to forgive us again. He's faithful and true.
Apparently, we did a whole service with the microphone off and nobody even knew. So now I've been told I have to watch and make sure. Wow. Oh, good to see you all. Wow. We, um, we, um, uh, for those who weren't here this morning, um, uh, Warren and Lee, who have been attending here for months now, probably a couple of years, I don't even know, it just seems like they've always been here, but uh, Lee has passed away from a heart attack, and uh, she's found on the floor in her bedroom, and Warren was found on the bed, and he had a stroke, and he was unconscious, so we're not really sure what happened, but uh, Warren's in the hospital, and um, and uh, Lee is going to be buried tomorrow, funerals tomorrow, in Stouffville, for all those who want to attend, Stouffville, it's O'Neill Funeral Home. It's at 11 o'clock, so you're welcome to, uh, to join. It would be good. I don't even know. Let me ask you, Danielle. Maybe you know. Is Warren's family, like, are they born again? Or are they, have you met these people? Um, their children, Sean and April, are. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, okay. Excellent. Well, that helps us out a lot. Jenny's going to be playing some songs for them, and we weren't sure how that was all going to go because we didn't know about the family. We, I think I met Sean once, but I didn't even know they had a daughter, so that's, uh, that's how we... Anyway, it's a sad situation for Warren. He won't be able to be at the funeral. He's, he's still in the hospital. So uh, anyway, pray for the, uh, the Why Not family. That's the name, Why Not. And uh, we need to pray for Kim's mother, Sandra. She's not well. She's in the hospital. We need to pray for her. And we need to continue to pray for Elise uh, as they're trying to figure out what's wrong with her. She's not, in, it's not a mental thing. <laughs> uh, she has some muscle thing. She, we need to get that figured out. So pray for her and uh, pray for anyone else you know that's not well. There's a, there's a, a Facebook page, uh, Hope for Today. Women. Women. That's why I don't go on there, but... If you go on there, there should be some people to pray for and stuff. And we post that stuff there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think John's in charge of the woman's page. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I made that up. So um, we also have baptism is coming up. We don't have a date set right yet, but if you're thinking of being baptized, we'd love to do that for you. It won't be in the lake. We have a we have a hot tub we set up here. Because we're we're classy people, <laughs> so this is an Anglican church, so they never built a baptismal because they do the the, the bird bath thing, the sprinkle out of the, and and so we need to immerse because that's the Greek immersion baptizo, and so we want to uh, we want to baptize. If you have never been baptized, we'd love to baptize you because Jesus says to get baptized. It doesn't save you. It does not make you a child of God. It does nothing like that. It's a public pro proclamation of your faith in Jesus Christ. And Jesus asks you to do that. And he asks us to go out, make disciples and baptize them. So that's what we do as a, to show our obedience to Christ and to publicly proclaim our faith in Christ Jesus. Okay, so if you want to get baptized, email me. Email, or email here at the church, Brian Vaughn. B. Vaughn. You can look me up on, uh, on our website. You guys aren't making a sound. You're freaking me out. <laughs> I'm used to a whole bunch of cat calls and stuff. Look deeply into my eyes. Now close your eyes, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day. What a beautiful, sunny day. Oh, God, we thank you. It reminds us that summer's coming. We're so grateful. Thank you so much, Lord, for your love for us, your care for us. And, uh, Father, we pray for Elise today. We pray for the doctors that they would come up with some answers so that they can treat something. And, Father, we pray for our Kim's mom, Sandra. In Jesus' name, touch her and heal her. Whatever's going on there, make her well again. Father, we pray for Warren. And uh, Lord, we don't even understand that situation. I 
can't understand the things he's going through right now. And he's by himself and no one's allowed to get in to see him. Oh, how awful is that? So in Jesus' name we pray. Let's hold his hand and give him comfort, give him peace. God, that he'd know he's not alone and that his family here is praying for him. And as we, as we attend the funeral tomorrow, there will be people there who don't know you. And we pray in Jesus' name that because of Lee's life, and because of her love for Jesus, that they would, they would find the Lord at that funeral. Wouldn't that be terrific? God, pour out your spirit upon that place. Touch those people, we pray. And Father, as we look into your word tonight, speak to us through your Holy Spirit. Show us what it is you want to teach us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, Hosea. We're in Hosea chapter 4. This is, um, this is our fourth sermon, our fourth series message in the series of uh, for Hosea. We're going to go right through the book of Hosea, verse by verse. I, I like to do exegetical preaching so that we do verse by verse, chapter by chapter, so that we can get an overall view of the book, but also, and so all the topics that we would normally cover will come up, because they're all in the Bible, so we're going to hit on them sooner or later. And uh, right now we're in Hosea, and, and when Hosea is done, we'll be back into the New Testament, and back into the Old Testament, back into the what we're going to do. So if you don't like it, thank you. <laughs> we do have a problem. Yeah. Is there a four? Disappeared. It, it's disappeared. It's gone. The whole thing? The whole thing. Zero okay. slides. Okay. I can just give you a heads up on, on the <laughs> verses and I'll call it. Pastor Colin, we're going to have to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> There's swearing, there's lying, there's murder, there's stealing, there's committing adultery. They're breaking all the boundaries. And bloodshed follows bloodshed. Therefore the land mourns, and all who dwell in it are languished. And also the beasts of the field and the birds of the heavens, and even the fish of the sea are taken away. Yet let no one contend. Let none accuse. For with you is my contention, O priest. God is talking to the priests, the priests of God. They're supposed to be priests of God. And God's talking to them and he's saying, my problem is with you. You shall stumble by day. The prophet also shall stumble with you by night. And I will destroy your mother. Your mother is, is Israel. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. I reject you from being a priest to me. And, and since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. The more they increase, the more they sin against me, I will change their glory into shame. They fed on the sin of my people. They are greedy for their iniquity, for their sin. And it shall be like priests, like people. Like people, like priests. And I will punish them for their ways and repay them for their deeds. So when it says like, like the people will be like the priests. And the priests, the priests, this is, this is something, actually, something that Derek's been saying to me for years. He says, as, as the pastor goes, so go the people. And it's true. You, you, you go to different churches, different fellowships, however the pastor goes. If the pastor doesn't go out and do evangelism, the people in the fellowship aren't going to go out and do evangelism. If, if the pastor isn't preaching the whole counsel of the world, people aren't going to preach the whole counsel. 
As the pastor goes, as the priest goes, so go the people. These priests are sinning. They've turned away from God. They've turned to idols, to doing sacrifices, styles, and the people are following right along. Following right along. If you ever wonder how cults start, that's how they start. <laughs> they get to a place where, where, where the pastor realizes that the people will do anything that he's doing. They'll follow him. Like sheep. They shall eat, but not be satisfied. They shall play the whore, but not multiply, because they've forsaken the Lord to cherish more of wine and new wine, which take away the understanding. My people inquire of a piece of wood. They, they've made a little, a little sculpture, a piece of wood. And they're asking it. They're talking to it. And their walking staff gives them oracles. For a spirit of whoredom has led them astray, and they have left their God to play the whore. They sacrifice on the tops of mountains, and they burn offerings on the hills under oak, poplar, and terebinth, because their shade is good. Therefore your daughters play the whore, and your brides commit adultery. There's, there's no faithfulness in the land. Everybody's unfaithful. I will not punish your daughters when they play the whore, nor your brides when they commit adultery. For the men themselves go aside with prostitutes and sacrifice with cult prostitutes, and the people are without understanding, and they shall come to ruin. Things are a mess. Though you play the whore, O Israel, let not Judah become guilty. Remember, there's two tribes, the, the south and the north. They've divided. So Israel is one tribe. That's ten tribes joined together. And Judah is, is two tribes that have joined together. There's, there's this separation, this division. O Israel, let not Judah become guilty. Enter not into Gilgal, nor go up to Beth Haven, and swear not as the Lord lives. Like a stubborn heifer, Israel is stubborn. Can the Lord now feed them like a lamb in a broad pasture? Ephraim, that's Israel, is joined to idols. Leave them alone. Stay away from them. Stay away from those who are joined to idols. When their drink is gone, they give themselves to whoring. Their rules dearly love shame. Rulers, sorry. A wind has wrapped them in its wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. I don't know if you can hear God's, God's heart broken here as he talks to his people. Today in our passage, we can see that God wanted to forgive his people. He really did. But they were not even admitting that they had sinned. They wouldn't even confess that they had said, no, what we're doing is not wrong. We're still worshiping you, Lord. They were worshiping God, but they were also worshiping other gods. It's awful. We cannot be forgiven if we think that we don't need to ask for forgiveness. It's like, it's like talking to someone who's a drunk and saying, man, you need help. You can't help that person unless that person says, I have a problem. The same with these people, same with us. If we think we're not sinners, how's God going to forgive us? It's a true statement to say that until the people experience the guilt of their sin, they will never experience salvation. They will never experience the, the wonder of being born again. They can't unless they experience the guilt of their sin. From the terrible experience that Hosea has been having with his wife, Hosea knows how sin breaks the heart of God. Amen. It doesn't just break God's heart, but it also goes against the holiness of God. God is holy, so sin tries to slap God in the face. Look at verses 1 and 2 of Hosea 4. Hear the word of the Lord, O children of Israel. For the Lord has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. There's no faithfulness. There's no steadfast love. There's no knowledge of God in the land. 
There is swearing and lying and murdering and stealing and committing adultery. They break all the boundaries. And bloodshed follows bloodshed. God, God was having this quarrel with Israel. He's having this controversy with them. The people have broken their covenant with God, the covenant that God made with them at Mount Sinai. They've broken that. Just as Gomer, Hosea's wife, just as Gomer had broken her vows to her husband, so Israel, the bride, has broken her vows to the bridegroom. They break all restraints. They break all bonds, that verse 2. It, it all connects back to, to leaving the knowledge of God. That soon the truth and mercy are things of the past and people no longer practice restraint. When you start sinning, you get more and more into sin. The boundaries just keep growing and growing. Nothing bothers you after a while. Yet you often wonder how people... People like, like, like Hitler, how did he get to the place where it didn't bother him to murder people by the, by the thousands, by the hundreds of thousands, by the millions? How did he ever get to that place? You don't just wake up one day and say, I think I'm going to kill six million Jews. Doesn't happen. You start sinning, and the more you sin, the more you lose your boundaries, the more you lose your restraint, your self-control. Our modern age is completely set against the idea of restraint. All, all the commercials that we see on TV and billboards and stuff, it's all about me. Just do it. It's all about you. It's your happiness. Go, go for it. I have rights. That's not what God wants for us. He wants us to have boundaries. In fact, God says that, that the parents who don't discipline their children don't love their children. If you don't discipline your kids, you don't love them. If they don't have boundaries, and, and, and you know, it's when I always remember when kids are like, they're like four or five, well, every year they get older, they, they, they try to push the boundaries. They, they try to push you. And some days they do things that are absolutely ridiculous. Like, what are you doing? They're, they're checking out their boundaries. It, it's something we have in us. We need restraint. We need discipline. You wouldn't have a child and not, and not teach your kid that there's boundaries. You can't run out on the road. You can't play tiddly links on the highway. It's not a good deal. See how I just aged myself tiddly on That's all the kids want. It was that or plum. <laughs> the ultimate result of having no boundaries, no restraint, is bloodshed after bloodshed. The ancient Hebrew, it, it literally means... It, Bloody deed touches bloody deed. There was no mercy in the land. There was no love for one's neighbor. There was no compassion for the poor and needy. People were false-hearted towards God. They feigned praise. They didn't mean it. They were half-hearted, false-hearted. They were faking it. And they were hard-hearted hard toward one another. The basic sin of, of ignorance. There was no knowledge of God in the land. Look at Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I reject you from being a priest to me. And since you have forgotten the law of your God, I have forgotten your children. This isn't saying that people didn't know God. These guys knew who God was. Knowledge of God is not knowing who he is. Knowledge of God is having an intimate relationship with God. That's when the Bible talks about knowledge of God. It's talking as though, it's talking like a, a husband towards his wife. Do you know your wife? I know my wife, somewhat. <laughs> but I know her. I don't just know of her. I know her. I know when she's mad at me. Pretty much... Oh, five years has gone by. <laughs> it's the same with God. We can, we can know God. We can know of God. If we know God, it's because we've been reading the word of God and we've been getting to know him. And it's building our personal relationship with God. 
If you don't have a personal relationship with God, you don't know God. You know of God. You don't know God. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. That's knowledge of God. Look back at, at, at 4, verse 2. There is swearing, lying, murder, stealing, committing adultery, and they break all the bonds, all restraints, and their bloodshed falls bloodshed. So God points to the Ten Commandments for these people. He points to the Ten Laws. And in doing this, he reminds his people that they've violated the law. They've turned against God. They no longer are obedient to him. As a result of their disobedience, they brought punishment upon themselves. Hosea said to the corrupt priest, go blame the people for what's happening because they're only following your bad example. Don't project the blame upon the people. Priests, priests are probably going like, it was their fault. You remember, remember at the, the, the bottom of Mount Sinai, Moses is up in the mountain and he's, uh, he's getting the law from God. The people are all down below and they're, they're thinking Moses ain't coming back. It's been 10 minutes. So, so they go to Aaron, the priest, and they say, make us a golden calf. Right. And Aaron does it. And it's like, it's like he's blaming them when, when Moses comes. Well, the people told me to. <laughs> That's a good one, eh? <laughs> the people told me to. When we obey God's word, we walk in the light and we don't stumble. But when we reject the word of God, we walk in the darkness and we will stumble. Hosea chapter 4, verses 1 and 2. I've read that to you a couple of times. You probably got it memorized. But it's interesting in, in these uh, verses. Uh, worldly and ignorant spiritual leaders produce worldly and ignorant people. And this brings the punishment of God. It's so important that each one of us, individually, each one of us, read the Word of God. Because it's very easy for a pastor, a priest, whoever's up front, to mislead the people. And the only way you know if you're being misled is if you read the Word of God for yourself. You understand that? You think if the people who were in Jim Jones Baptist Church down in San Diego... If those people had read the Word of God, if they knew the Word of God, would they have been deceived by Jim Jones, sold everything, gone off to Guyana, and then drank some poison Kool-Aid? Do you think that would have happened? They just got sucked into that guy, man. He just, everything he said, they believed. Same with David Koresh. People gave their lives for David Koresh. Why? Because they didn't read the Word of God. They let him give his opinion, his interpretation. You need to read the Word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Um, we're going to do a little experiment, actually. In the next couple of years, I'm going to go way off the rails, okay? <laughs> and, and I'm going to see who follows me. I'm just going to, I'm going to go nuts. Yeah? It'll be a good one. That's when I'll start driving like a Cadillac or something. <laughs> So, so like Derek said, like Derek taught me, this is, this is the whole phrase, and I don't know, I only heard the first part from Derek, I think. I don't know where the rest of it came from, but as goes spiritual leadership, so goes the church. As goes the church, so goes morality. As goes morality, so goes the nation. You see, the church, we are the light of the world. And, and if I mislead you, then, then we've lost, our morality will go. And if our morality goes, the whole nation will fall apart. It's a lot of responsibility. But listen, right now the restrainer is in the world. The Holy Spirit of God is in the world. And the Bible says that he's the restrainer. He's holding back things from just falling apart. You think they're falling apart now? This is nothing. But one day, God's going to take the restrainer from the world. He's going to take the Holy Spirit back. If 
you can imagine, this is what the world's like with the Holy Spirit here. If the restrainer is taken, what's it going to be like? Man, think on that one. That's crazy. We are the light of the world. There's a lot of things that we do. You may think that we're not getting nowhere here with the people. But a lot of things that we do hold people back. The reason that the reason that we have, well, the reason the United States has, I can't even say Canada has, but the reason the United States, many of the states have, have this heartbeat rule for abortion. You can't, you can't kill a baby when it's on the table after it's come out of the mother's womb. You can't do that in some states in the United States. It's considered murder. And that's because some people care about life because God cares about life. In Canada, we don't have that rule because Canadians are less likely to stand up for what's right because that's just the way we were raised. So in Canada, a child can come right out of the mother. As long as the umbilical cord is attached, you can kill that child. Ooh. I don't like the way that one looks. Let's get rid of that. If we didn't have the restrainer, do you know how bad this would be? If people didn't have conscience, if people didn't know if it was right and wrong because morality was gone, why would morality be gone? Because the church is gone. And why would the church be gone? Because the pastor led them down the wrong way. As goes spiritual leadership, so goes the church. As goes the church, so goes morality. As goes morality, so goes the nation. I don't really know who said all that. I don't think it was Derek. <laughs> you got the first part. Right? But, but this is crazy. You think about this. This is amazing. God condemned those leaders for trapping innocent people, exploiting them. There was no justice in the land. They were sinking deep in sin and lacked the power to repent and turn back to God. There comes a time when God turns you away. There's a time when God says, you want to sin? You want to keep sinning? Go ahead. And he gave them over to their debased minds, to their, to their sinful ways. He just gave them over. No more repentance. You, want, you read through Revelation. Read through the book of Revelation. Tell me that somebody repents. Even when the two witnesses come down from heaven and they're, 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 they're witnessing, they're they're teaching the good news about Jesus. And you know what happens? The people kill them, leave them in the street dead for three days. Then they resurrect back to life. And then everybody repents. No, nobody repented. Even when you see a miracle of God, even when God's reaching out, reaching out, reaching out, people are still going, no. It's unbelievable. They don't have the power to repent or turn back to God for their sins have paralyzed them. Your sin can paralyze you. Can be, you can get so lost in your sin that you just can't, you can't come back. Think about that. And what was the cause? They didn't know the Lord and their arrogance led them to stumble and fall. Even if they came to the Lord with an entire flock or an entire herd of sheep, to sacrifice. God would not have met with them because he would fall on himself from them. He rejected their illegitimate children in their monthly feasts. Their monthly feasts became monthly funerals. People are guilty. And that's what happens in verses 8 to 15 of chapter 5. God pronounces the sentence. The people are guilty and God pronounces the sentence upon them. I'm not going to read that to you because it's pretty long. You can read that, but let me read to you verse 13. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, Israel was sick. Ephraim, sick, just, just sinful, turned away from God, worshiping idol. Judah's not far behind. They're still better, but they're not far behind. They're wounded. Ephraim saw his sickness. Judah saw his wound. Then Ephraim went to Assyria. Oh! After all God did for Israel, all the miracles that they had seen, all the times that God had reached out and touched them, all the times that God had rescued them, now they see their sick. They say they need help. Oh my goodness, we need help, we need help. 
So they run to the Lord? No. They went to Assyria. They put their faith in politics. They went to the Syria. They went to the king of Assyria. And they sent to the great king. They go to the great king of Assyria and say, we need help. Are you nuts? You're the people of God. But we're so steeped in our sin, we've been worshiping idols, we've been, we can't even turn to God for help anymore. We can't even turn to God for help. They needed prayer, they needed repentance, but instead they trusted politics and useless treaties. And so what happened? Huh. Assyria says, sure, we'll help you. And they take them captive. They take them away from their country. They destroy. They destroy Israel. Yeah, we'll help you. Isn't that politics? We'll help you. Let us destroy your country for you. You're taking the slaves. All the Lord could do was withdraw and wait for them to seek his face in truth and humility. If they repented, God would have forgiven them, because that's what God does. If they had repented, if they had turned from their sin and repented, God would have forgiven them. But they didn't ask. They went to Assyria. They were taken captive. We need to turn to Jesus while we can. You know, some of us might think, well, it's okay, I'm just playing with a little bit of sin. It's just a little bit. Oh, it's kind of just, it's, it's just nothing. It's just a little bit. You, see, you play with sin. It's going to draw you in. You can't live a life with sin in it and say you're a follower of God. And, and if you do, keep, you hold on to the sins that you like. You'll get further and further away from God, and you'll end up in a place where when you need help, you can't even call on God. You can't even call on God. You don't have it in you. Is that an awful thought? You could be lost forever. Don't mess with sin. If there's sin in your life, repent. Just call out to God. He'll help you. You can, you can, you can get away from that sin. Some of it's going to be hard. Sure, I get it. The Holy Spirit will give you power. You will overcome. Don't wait until you end up calling on Assyria. Does that story make sense? You see what's happening there? Boy, if that don't wake you up. I thought I was reading that. It made me cry. I thought, oh, so many times I could have been sucked back into sin. And I could have died. I'm crazy. My wife will tell you, I'm crazy. When I do something, I go full body. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not good. My family, they're all laughing at me. Like, that's not funny, but <laughs> it's true, man. Like, anyone who's gone out for lunch with me, I'm like George. We drink far too much Diet Coke. <laughs> yeah. When we get into something, Sin is the worst because sin just seems so attractive. It seems so attractive. And it's really not. Repent of our sin. That's what we need to do. And we need to turn to God to help us. We don't need to turn to self-help books. We don't need to turn to the, the gurus of Anthony Robbins. We need to turn to the Lord Jesus. And he is there waiting to forgive us and accept us back into the family. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this, this story in Hosea. But Lord, the examples that you've given us, I, we'd be pretty hard up if we stood before you and said we had no idea. You, you've spelled it out for us simple and clear. You want a people who are faithful, a people who are obedient, a people who care, a people who love, people who turn to you. Every day, not just when they're in trouble, but all the time. Oh God, we need you. Every hour, we need you. Thank you, Father. I pray for anybody who's watching live stream, anyone who's watching on YouTube, anyone who's sitting in this building right now. I pray that each one of us would take serious account of our lives. 
we would, we would sit down and, and, and ask, them, is there any sin in my life that I need dealing with? I, I love when, when David says, search me, O God. Know my heart, I pray. Search me, O God. Let me know the sin that I have in my heart so that we can work on it now. I don't want to ever be so involved in sin that I can't come back. I don't even want to be involved in sin at all. I want to walk into heaven. I want my Lord Jesus to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And I pray that everybody else feels the same way. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for loving us so much. For always being there, welcoming us, accepting us. As long as we're faithful to you, as long as we trust in Jesus Christ. And we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's stand and sing together. Thank you.
and talk to God. So um, I'm just going to play this through, and then uh, in a few minutes we'll, we'll end with the chorus.
Jesus, I give you all the glory tonight, all the praise that's due your name. 